gentleman from Michigan. At this time, I yield four minutes to the distinguished minority whip, a leader on developing the substitute, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Cannon. So Virginia is recognized for four minutes. Thank you, Chairman. And I, I thank the ranking member, the gentleman from Michigan. As the economy seeks further into recession, all of us, all of us understand that this House needs to take concrete action to lift us and help lift America's families out of this crisis. We Republicans support this alternative because we believe it is a true stimulus bill. It does not take us into headlong, soaring debt and lead to future tax increases. This alternative is based on the premise that if we're going to pass a stimulus bill, it has to be focused like a razor's edge on the protection, preservation, and creation of jobs. And Mr. Chairman, we cannot support the majority's alternative. Although we do understand that this is a work in progress, although we do understand and we've spoken with the President who says he has no pride of authorship, he wants us to continue to be part of the process. He wants this to be a stimulus bill. Mr. Chairman, this bill is not that. With the amount of spending in this bill, we could, we could dedicate it solely to job creation. Much of what the other side has continued to say and continues to promote perhaps may be laudable goals and good programs. But when you have $136 billion of additional new programs in this bill, you've got to ask, how stimulative are these new programs? What about the small businesses, the entrepreneurs, the self-employed that are out there who don't want more government programs? They just need a break. They need to know their government will not keep borrowing money and laying debt onto our children to the tune of trillions of dollars a year. They want meaningful incentives so they can get back off the sidelines, put capital to work, and create jobs. Now, Mr. Chairman, I would say that the Congressional Budget Office has already opined several times on the lack of stimulus uh, in the majority's bill. In fact, some estimates say only 12 cents on the dollar could arguably be stimulative. Mr. Chairman, there are additional uh, voices who have spoken out, Democrats and Republicans. Christine Romer, the incoming uh, head of the Council of Economic Advisors for the Obama White House, says, in her analysis, if it is applied, as we have applied, as, as some of the folks who have used her analysis and her formula uh, to your bill, that our alternative creates, creates twice as many jobs at half the cost. And that's what we ought to be about in this House, is trying to figure out how we can do things that work at less cost to the taxpayer. I'd also say, Mr. Chairman, Alice Riblin, the economic expert from the Clinton administration, she also opined and said, you know what? The majority's bill has terrific amounts of spending in it, and they may be laudable, and they're, but they're long-term investment programs. So we need, she says, we need to separate out these long-term investment programs from what is stimulative. We have regular order in this Congress so that the American people can participate, we can be deliberative and get it right on the long-term programs. Right now, Mr. Chairman, we ought to be about protecting the jobs that are out there and creating new ones. Again, focus like a laser. The Republican plan does this without all the spending and waste, and we can create the jobs at half the cost. Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much, and I yield back.